If you want to know how you can use Ecamm Live to do on-screen telestration and by on-screen telestration, I mean things like this, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and in this video we're talking about as I said, on-screen telestration or writing on the screen. And this has a number of great uses. First of all, if you are using uh, Ecamm Live to, uh, as an educational tool uh, to deliver course content, then often we still want to uh, give that sort of those written notes and things like that to our students. And uh, especially if you are in a live environment where you just need to add some annotations or explain a point or something like that. Uh, in the olden days, obviously, the way to do it would be to, and by the olden days, I mean just a year ago, <laughs> would be to turn your back on the entire class and start writing on a whiteboard or whatever, or maybe looking down at a, a projector screen or something like that to write on overheads. and basically breaking the engagement with the audience. Another reason why you might want to uh, use this is in meetings when you're on Zoom calls and uh, I'll be doing a whole video, in fact a whole series of videos about how to get the best use out of Zoom in the modern age uh, and incorporating that with things like Ecamm Live virtual cameras so that you can still deliver your best presentations, uh, in fact even better than you could before because you can do them directly to the audience. Uh, almost one-on-one, -on -one, just like I'm speaking to you now. I'm only speaking to you. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is the, a great way to do that. And as I say, you can just simply uh, write on the screen and uh, it is a, a, a great system. And it takes nothing more than, as you may have seen in my hand, an Apple Pencil. And it doesn't have to be the latest Apple Pencil. This is the original Apple Pencil. And this is with an iPad. And it's not the latest iPad either. It's uh, it's actually a first generation iPad Pro, but basically anything where the Apple Pencil uh, can be used with the iPad. There are other ways to do this as well, by the way. You can do it by hooking up an external Wacom tablet or something like that. But I'm not gonna get into that these at the moment. I'm just gonna talk about the iPad method. So how do we uh, do the iPad method? Well, we uh, simply, if I come into my uh, screen sharing mode for a moment or demo mode in Ecamm Live. So here we are. You should hopefully be able to see everything now, all of my uh, Ecamm Live. So what I'm going to do is if I just uh, close some of these down a little bit to make things a little bit easier for you to see. Uh, I've created a new blank scene here. In fact, I've got a couple. So there we go. The screen's gotten blank. Let me just delete this one. Oh, this is very unprofessional, isn't it? Here I am talking about professionalism <laughs> and I've got two, two duplicate scenes. There we go. So there is our new scene and it's completely blank. Well, let's get uh, a picture back in here. So I'm going to add a camera source. So that is me. And there we go. There is me and my green screen. In case you didn't know, that isn't a real background. <laughs> I did do a, a video all about my uh, green screen. So I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Uh, this is the default green screen. Uh, but there we go. I'm back home again in my nice little purple virtual living room. <laughs> so uh, that is the uh, the background. Now all I'm going to do is I've linked my uh, uh, my iPad, so it's just connected over a cable to the uh, the uh, laptop. And what I'm going to do in here is if I just come out of this application for a moment, uh, I'm going to add in a new camera source. So we come over to our overlays tab, and I click on camera. So that will just default to our default camera, which is my main camera. And in here, if I click the little pencil icon, then I can change this to be my iPad Pro. So I'll click on that. And now you can see my screen uh, as I'm seen on my iPad. And hopefully that should have given it away a little bit because all that I've got on my iPad, this is actually Keynote open and I've got a series of green slides. So uh, I've just created a new slide and set the background to be green. And there's one blue one in there, which I'll come to in a moment. But essentially, it is a, a series of slides. Now, the uh, aspect ratio of this uh, little window is defaulted to this uh, widescreen. Uh, but actually, what we want to do is the real magic happens with this. Let me just uncover my face. Or maybe I should cover it back up again. Uh, whichever. Uh, then uh, the real magic happens when we press play on this and we run it as a slideshow. So I'm going to uh, press the little play button now. So this is now running a, a slideshow. But the slideshow is obviously just blank green slides. But if I just come to my top down shot as well, uh, there we go. You can see I've just got a set of blank slides. 
Now, if I just uh, pop back, having said that, <laughs> to uh, my uh, demo scene, which is this one. Uh, when you are in slideshow mode, if I change the aspect ratio of this, rather than resizing this window and trying to get it fit to fit to the uh, the whole screen, uh, if I just come into here and I select the uh, custom, it does cunningly actually default to crop off those little black bars and it makes it the same size as the slide, which is kind of useful really. And now I can line up that with the corner and drag it down to the bottom. So now we've just got the whole of the iPad screen and I know you can guess what's coming really, can't you? Uh, if I go into the camera effects, because funnily enough, although this is the screen, it's not classed as a screen sharing, it is classed as a camera source. So I can come down to the camera effects uh, area down here and I can change to my iPad Pro and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to simply switch on green screen. And now it defaults to that uh, default background <laughs> that Ecamm Live always uses. But we don't want that. So I'm going to come to this transparent. And now we have got transparency. Now the thing about transparency is, in fact, let me just quickly, while I'm just talking to you so that this you'll actually see what I'm doing. If I add another quick camera feed and I'll change this to be my top down camera. So there you go. Let me uh, just change that to be, uh, maybe I'll make it a square, shall I, for a change. I'm usually all, all about squares, but I'll make it round for a change. <laughs> so there you go. You can now see my iPad in the shot and you can see that I've got my old Apple Pencil. And now what's going to happen is when I draw on the screen, it is drawing on the, uh, the main screen as well. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple, really. And uh, you can either use the little backwards arrow there to uh, go back, uh, or you can, if you've done lots of different notes, uh, these are obviously not really very note-like, but there you go. You can just press and hold on the arrow, and then there's also an option to clear all. Now, one thing you will notice is that now I've clicked on that, whereas before the uh, screen was completely blank, can you see how that little pop-up there that undo and clear all has actually crept into the shot. So one thing that you could do if you were really picky about it is you could move it out of the way and you could make it a bit bigger and then you could put that down there so that you never actually see, see that clear all. That would be an option for you if you were uh, bothered about that. Uh, but I'll just put it back for the time being just so that you do get to see the whole of the screen. And uh, now I've really messed up my sizes now, haven't I? There we go pull that back there we go so uh, then I could press clear all now one thing to bear in mind is obviously the color of your background uh, now as you can see from my little uh, in window shot in fact why don't I make this full screen so that you can see a little bit better if I uh, press that one there you go so you can hopefully see my little uh, uh, iPad Pro window and what I can even do is I can use the zoom in Ecamm live to maybe zoom this uh, camera in a little bit and there we go and I'll just reposition it uh, so now you should be able to see my iPad screen and as, as you can see you've got these different colors along the bottom so obviously one of the colors is green that's not going to show up in fact you can't even see that it's green because I've got the uh, green screen on I think but if I tilt it like that you can see we've basically got red yellow blue per, uh, green purple white or black so on my background at the moment the uh, white one sort of shows up fairly well the uh, black one as well shows up fairly uh, well, or not quite as well as the white one actually, but then you can play around with those colors. Uh, depending on the, uh, you know, if you could use this for writing on slides and things like that as well, obviously, by the way. Um, but the, another thing that you've got is you do actually have this little red pointer. So if I click on that, then that just becomes a red pointer. So if you had uh, some some slides or something like that up as well or maybe if you were doing a demo of something on the Mac and you didn't want to use Pro Mouse, Pro Mouse is a great way to highlight something but you could always just have this live and then you can just point to something on here or maybe you're watching, maybe you're doing videos about, I don't know, replays of sports or something like that and you wanted to show, uh, you know, where something is on the screen using that or maybe uh, <laughs> telestrating with this the, the options are endless, but one thing to bear in mind is the, the color of the background and the color that you want. Now, if you did ever want to have green, then obviously if I write on the iPad in green, you can actually see in my little preview window up there in the top corner that I have got a green line on there, but obviously the green lines are not showing on the screen because of the green screen effect. So what you could do in that case, if you really were fixed on having green, is if we just come out of presentation mode and you can see the green screen is still applied to all of those. Let me just turn the green screen off for one moment so that you can see what I'm actually doing. Uh, one second.
one second. Here we go. In fact, I need to be in demo mode for this anyway. So <laughs> there we go. I'll come out from that. So I've just turned the green screen off. But what you can do is you can get the same effect if you have blue slides. And then in Ecamm Live, you have the option down here. So we've got green screen, but we could also uh, turn that on and then toggle it to a blue screen. And then again, we've got exactly the same effect. But now we can, if we want to, <laughs> we can use our, uh, uh, our green pen. So now we can even have green on the screen if that's what we want. I actually find green sometimes does pop out more than some of the other colors, uh, especially with this background. It does stand out a little bit. Another thing to bear in mind is you can adjust the sensitivity of the green screen effect. So that is here with this uh, fade level. So just uh, down, uh, where is it? <laughs> down here somewhere. So this fade level, you can move this up and down. And as you can see, at some point, it just sort of cuts it out. But then if you fade it up the other way, then at some point it may crop the uh, the the, the lines, but it does sort of sharpen up the edge of the lines. But this is probably a good point to uh, make, make if I get a different color pen. So we've got a red line, a yellow line. We've uh, obviously the blue won't work on this, but the purple, we've got white and we've got a black line. Uh, you can already see that some of those are working better than others. And if I turn the uh, adjust the slider here, you can see how quickly some of those disappear. So on a blue screen, the uh, red, yellow and green are the most persistent and will stay there and stay uh, sharp and looking like good lines uh, much longer than the uh, the white and the black. But the white and the black do work if you just leave the default setting on Ecom Live anyway. Uh, so before I finish, one other little tip that you might be interested in is uh, Obviously, if I start writing and I accidentally write over my face, <laughs> that might not look so good. So uh, you might want to think about the exact areas which are sort of safe zones. So maybe if we've got an area sort of around here, which we think is the safe zone where we uh, don't want to write and we can write anywhere else. Then one way that you could actually do this is if I come back out of this for a moment, I'm going to switch off my blue screen and I'm still sharing my whole screen, obviously, so you can see what I'm doing on the iPad. I'm going to come out of the actual presentation. Uh, that annotation that we have been doing has been done uh, whilst we are... Uh, in fact, let me just come out here a minute. It's a bit rude to speak, but I'm not... Uh, not looking at you, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so one second. There we go. So uh, it is um, uh, it is possible when you're in the slides to actually annotate the slides beforehand. And the when we're in the the full screen view, these annotations uh, are only existing in that um, in that sort of slideshow. So as soon as I actually exit that, then those disappear. They only stay on the screen for that amount of time. So. What you can do is, if you want to, is you can come over to uh, the uh, blank screen and then before you've gone into the slideshow, if I uh, click on uh, this one, in fact, let me come out of demo mode again so that I can show you. Uh, if I click on the bottom, in fact, I need to adjust the size of this so that you can see what I'm talking about. One second. <laughs> I'll make this a little bit better. I should have planned a whole scene for this really, shouldn't I? I need to make a scene with a, a little iPad in it so that you can see what I'm talking about. So when you're in the slide uh, viewer mode, uh, as well as being able to sleep, see all of your slides, you can also see these little drawing tools here as well, if you've got the Apple Pencil. So what I could do is I could come here and I could select a blue colored pencil. And then if I knew that this was the safe area that I did not want to, uh, to write in, I could literally just draw it like that. You might want to be a bit more technical than that little scribble, but I could draw it like that. Now, what that's going to do is when I click into my slideshow, I am going to see those uh, boundaries that I don't want to uh, go outside of. And if I pull that back to the uh, full screen again, the way I had it before, I'll make a bit of a mess about this, but I'm hoping that you can still see what I'm trying to demonstrate. <laughs> Uh, there we go. So we've now got that little outline of uh, where I'm normally sitting in the frame and we want to know not to write in that area. Well, now if I uh, just switch my blue screen back on, now you can't see that line, but I can still see the line on my uh, iPad. So it means that I've got now a little guide of uh, an area. In fact, if I come like this, uh, you can see that I can still see the outline of that area. And so I know to only write in the areas that are outside of that so if I just uh, come back here, uh, as I say, I can tell that the area is basically around here and around here. And I can see this 
but you can't see that. So that is just a nice little way if you want to set some boundaries that people uh, won't be able to see as a viewer, but you, you will be able to see. All you need to do is do them in a slightly different shade of blue or green if you're using green screen and uh, nobody will even know and you'll look very professional. If you really wanted to, you could even make ruled lines so that you make your uh, writing look extra neat and in a line. But personally, I tend to stick with the... Uh, scroll <laughs> so i hope that that has been useful and as ever as ever if it has been useful don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and maybe even share it with somebody else who you feel might benefit from the content of this video uh, as i say i will be making a whole series of videos about how you can use these sorts of technologies and little tips and tricks to up your zoom meeting game uh, that will probably be the next sort of large series of videos that i make so i hope some of you find those useful uh, but until then don't forget, forget, there are always plenty more videos coming up next. Until then, have a great day.